Hello everyone and welcome to um, this poster session on web archiving the Olympic and Paralympic Games. So this covers the period from 2010 to 2022. And this is, a, not sure depending on what screen you're looking at, this is the poster so you may be able to see some of the text. But it just gives a general overview of the Olympic and Paralympic collections held by the IIPC from 2010 to 2022. And this poster will be circulated to all CDG members and it's uh, in PDF format, but also in a PowerPoint format, which means that the text could be translated and into multiple languages. So please do get in touch if you'd like to translate some of this text uh, and it could be used to promote the IPC CDG activities to both internal and external audiences. So just a very basic overview before I go into more detail. So um, the different images you can see there in the breakdown of the IPC collections looks at the data collected, the geographic spread of the collections, the subject covered, and also the languages covered. And then the additional um, web archive collection we have on the National Olympic and Paralympic Committees, which was established in 2016. So this is just a bit more detail about the data we've collected. So we don't quite have figures for the terabytes or the documents collected for the first two collections as they were done uh, with different technology. Um, it's in to date the IPC has archived seven games, four winter games, and three summer collections. 2010 to 2014, the IPC Web Archiving Access Group ran the, these collaborative collections, so they used a different platform to which we currently use the Archivit platform. 2016 was the first CDG collection, uh, Olympics and Paralympics. So the Content Development Group was established in 2016 to collectively streamline the uh, collaborative collection process. So. You, you do know that we've worked in lots of other collections um, in the past, including the refugee crisis in Europe and um, the, um, the COVID-19 is the biggest collection to date. And the collection policy has changed over time since we've started with these Olympic and Paralympic collections. And one of the key things from the 2002 collection was that social media was excluded for the first time. This is just due to the technical difficulties of archiving it through the Archivit platform. So I'll just leave that up there for a second just to take in some of the details. So looking at the geographic spread, you can see that we've got num uh, URLs in these collections from all over the world. But actually, when you look at the concentration of the volume of URLs we have for each country, you can see that there's a bias towards the CDG member countries. Uh, but we do have an online um, nomination form, which we started in 2016, to try and reach out to other partners in the web archiving community that aren't members of the IPC, but also Olympic and Paralympic enthusiasts who've got an interest in this um, in these events to nominate content from their countries as well that might not be represented within the IPC. So just a little overview of the collection. So we can see on the top left hand corner there's the subjects covered in the collection. So this is uh, different colours represent the different years. And you can see that the um, first column is athletes, teams, official websites related to the Olympics and, and Paralympics. And then we've got sporting events. So these are just the individual um, events. Um, then we have news, blog, social media all grouped together. And then doping. And you can see there's only four different years for doping because that's something we just actively started to collect um, from the 2016 collection onwards. Then we have political issues um, and you can see that some years there's kind of more um, collected in, than others. And um, But health is the last column and this is only in the last um, four games that we've started to look at this. So the first one we looked at in the 2016 collection was the Zika virus because the games were held in um, Brazil and there was a big outbreak of Zika virus. Some athletes didn't actually participate in the games because of the risk of contracting the virus. And then the following year, uh, two years later, the 2018 Winter Games was held in South Korea. There was no health concerns during those games. But as we know, last year was the 2020 um, Tokyo Olympics, which was postponed one year because of the COVID-19 outbreak. And then again, COVID-19 was a big issue for this year's uh, games. So that's uh, represented the subjects collected. Then um, we have the languages covered just underneath that. And you can kind of see um, there's, we've got many languages, there's 48 overall collect, represented in the collection, but you can see that there are some strong peaks around English, French, 
and um, Japanese as well. So where we've got strong IEPC um, membership, there's a more of a, um, a representation of those languages. And uh, then the final slide is just an overview of the National Olympics and Paralympics Committee's collection. So this was established in 2016 and it is um, quite a big collection. There's uh, over 300 URLs of the National Olympic Committees and also Paralympic Committees, but they're not all represented in this collection because it's actually not all of them actually do publish a website. And if they do, they're actually sometimes very hard to um, identify. So the um, International Olympic Committee has a website, uh, web page on their website with all the members and some of them link out to websites, but not all of them have a website in that section and even some of the websites linked to that are outdated and they've changed their URL since that was first uploaded. So it's quite hard to keep track of that collection. So if you do see any gaps and you can identify the web content, please let us know. And that's the end, so thank you.